One of my favorite mantras that I try to live my life by is give out generously, give in graciously, but never give up. And in this video, I am going to give in graciously and tell you all very publicly that I was wrong. My name's In Wills and welcome to the In Crowd. Now, one decision that we all have to make as GMs or dungeon masters or game masters is where will we store all our notes, campaign notes, adventure ideas, um, encounters, NPCs. Now, when I first started to play role playing games, I stored everything in A4 ring binders and I would write all my adventures out by hand, draw my maps on square paper and hope that there was never a fire and I would lose them all. There was no computers in those days. Well, maybe some, but nothing that could be easily accessed like we can now and definitely no cloud storage at all. I did a lot of handwriting, but I also had a typewriter that I had probably developed quite a few of my keyboard skills on. And I would write a, every month a fanzine called Animate Dead, Dead that I used to type using several sheets of paper with carbon paper behind each piece of paper I had to type really hard to make sure that it was copied through and then I would sell them for 10 pence yeah a fancy for 10 pence I still have some of them however as technology has increased there are now more options and I've gone through various stages and platforms to sh um, store my notes on I went through a phase of using Roll20 itself to actually store the information on. I've moved to Google Drive and stored it on there and even um, used a, a website, sorry, a, a web-based program called Realmworks and actually my own website as, as well. And at this point, I actually wrote a blog post called, Do You Really Need World Anvil? And in this post, I basically said that I didn't need World Anvil. But now, two years on from the original post, can I say I've changed my mind? And I just wanted to tell everyone that I'm now using World Anvil and absolutely loving it. Why am I using World Anvil now? What has changed? Well, to start off with, Realmworks was a fantastic program it really is but it had no internet option and so i could only use it as an application coupled with that is that i used to my portable computer is a macbook pro and realmworks had no macbook application i had to actually partition some of my macbook pro um, to make sure it could work on Windows. So I was I was getting to the point that I found it very hard just to write notes on it and actually engage with the creative process anywhere I was. And what I really want from a program that actually for my campaign notes, etc., is number one, something that I can access anywhere and that I can use it for notes or images or pictures, anything at all. And this is what World Anvil allows me to do. Yes, it's web-based, so you need an internet connection, but let's face it, when do we not have internet nowadays? One thing that did initially um, annoy me about World Anvil was the number of adverts on there. And in order to give it a, a fair crack at storing my campaign notes, I decided to splash out and actually pay for a subscription to it. 
And then I thought I can really make a decision about how good the site is. Now, the first thing I would like to say is that it's taken me a while to get to understand World Anvil and how to use it myself. And one thing I'm really trying to work at in, my, in all my um, life activities is rather than following somebody else's um, workflow, trying to think, <clears throat> okay, then how can I do it myself and what will actually work for me? So, yeah, it's taken me a while to find my feet with Will Danville, but they've got a fantastic um, Discord community that really is supportive and you can get really good feedback straight away. Okay, then, so why do I like World Anvil? Right, so first things first, my adventure notes. Now, when you're writing articles and there's a wealth of article types that you can actually use. And remember, World Anvil is for anything. It's not specifically for role playing games. It could be creating your own world f for fiction or just for fun or something like that. So um, I use a, an article type called a plot line and this next option is actually available no matter what happens so one thing that realmworks had and i was really used to was using the at command and what you could do is use the at symbol and then start to type something and it would link to an article that you already had established what this meant is that if you're looking at your adventure notes then there's that option that when it says, for example, in my um, M space world, Arid is the local starport. Uh, I can then click on that. It'll come up as a link and link it to the article um, that is the information all about Arid. The other really fantastic piece of, of <laughs> technology about it is that if you're on the view world and hover over it, uh, without actually clicking on it, then it brings up a little window that gives you the, the information that you need, just like an excerpt of it or something like that, which is brilliant. But the other thing that is really fantastic about this at command in World Anvil is that, say, for example, I'm writing an adventure and I suddenly think, oh, I'm going to have an NPC called Max. Then I can actually type at max and then in brackets put character and hit return and what this does is creates a placeholder okay and what this means is that it's a placeholder that when i actually create that um, character called max the actual npc data information then it will automatically link to that article fantastic or what but the other thing is World Anvil has a to-do list built in. And as soon as you do that, you can then, it, you want to use that placeholder, you automatically get a task on your to-do list to do. So you can actually, it's not as if you have to make a separate note or anything like that, it's there. And I've even started to use articles to capture um what's happening throughout a session so i have it there so yeah adventure notes and that app command absolutely fantastic so when it comes to actually sharing the information um, about your world to players or outside audience then you, there's a range of things there's some things that you want to share say just to your players there's some things that you might never want anybody else to see, just yourself, like secrets or something like that. Or you might want to have a group of people who have subscribed to the world, a bit of monetization and allow them to see things. And as the campaign is progressing, World Anvil copes with this extremely well and very effectively. So what I've done at the moment, say, for example, um, in my Mithras world, I have two groups. I have the player group and I have the supporters on Patreon group. So what this means is, say, for example, I 
or and then there's public, you know, um, everybody can see it. So say, for example, the um, contents of an escape pod. OK, I wanted to share this with the players. But, you know, if anybody was following the um, live session along when I was on Twitch, then I wanted them to be able to see it as well. So that might be actually public. Everybody can see it. But say, for example, I had developed a new rule or a new table that I only wanted players to see, then I can flag it that that article is only view viewable by myself and the players and nobody else can see it at all. And then, of course, I can go one step further and I have a tier in Patreon that basically says, if you're on this tier, you can see my adventure notes afterwards, after the session. So what I do is then I actually, once I finish the session, I go back and I add that subscriber group to all my adventure notes and they can automatically see it. Now they do need to have an account on World Anvil, but that's free. You know, there, there's no cost for that, you know, so you can actually see it. And then like, like I say, um, I can, if I want, like the video links, make that public for everyone to see. So really fantastic how they're thinking about sharing content with different people. And I'm only really scratching the surface of World Anvil. I'm using it on a regular basis now and I'm constantly trying to think, hang on a minute, can I put, how can I use that in World Anvil? If I want to store this, how can I do that in World Anvil? And World Anvil is becoming my go-to place for all my adventures. adventures. I play on Roll20, okay, but all my notes, characters, NPCs, relationships are all stored on World Anvil, that one-stop place for me. And there's still more. There's still more to come, you know, and lots of aspects that I haven't even started to explore as a role player that might be beneficial for others. For example, um, you can upload images, but I'm looking forward to them introducing a mapping function and putting maps up there where you could put um, drop pins on to sort of like identify certain areas. There's timelines that you can create, family trees that you can collect, um, create, and even sound files. So there's so much to do. And the, one of the new items that they've just done is a, a manuscript feature, which you can use to store your um, information about stories and fiction. I, I don't know if you can hear the dog barking, but I apologize now. I've been waiting all morning to re um, record this. And yep, it, they tore it in, but now it's back out. So I apologize for that. So anyway, yeah, this manuscript feature that you can, if you enjoy writing fiction, you can actually um, store it in World Anvil, which is a wonderful idea. So lots more possibilities coming out from World Anvil itself, which makes it very exciting. So as you can probably tell, I am completely besotted with World Anvil at the moment. Like I said, they're supported by two fantastic founders and a wonderful Discord um, channel or group that are really working hard on it. And some fantastic um, YouTube videos as well and websites and documentation. So it's all there for you to engage with at a level that you want. If I was to be asked again, do I really need World Anvil? Like, well, like I said at the beginning, it's time for me to give in graciously because if you can't already guess, do I really need World Anvil? Well, the answer now is definitely yes, completely. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will catch you all later. See ya. Bye.